Well, good morning, Southgate Church. My name is Randy, and it's a pleasure to be with you guys this morning. My pleasure to be bringing the Word of God to you this morning. Uh, Today, I want to talk to you guys about faith, battles, and shields. Now, the Christian life is a life of faith. Now, maybe you're here this morning and you're not really sure what it means to have faith. Well, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, we read, Now faith is the substance, the confidence or assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so I want to talk this morning about having a faith that looks beyond what we see and experience uh, in the natural to those things that are unseen, to a faith that says, no matter what comes my way, no matter what trial, the circumstances God is God, and He is in control. Now, as Christians, we live a life of faith. We believe in a God who we cannot see. We follow a man who we believe is God, who came from heaven to earth and was born as a baby, who died on a cross and was raised from the grave. This is faith. And whether we like it or not, The moment we decided to live a life of faith following Jesus, we stepped into a battle. We're going to be reading this morning from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. So if you want to turn with me in your Bible, your device, whatever you've got, I'm going to be going back and forth to that passage a bit. But uh, in Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 12, the Apostle Paul writes this, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Now, anytime you begin to live your life in such a way that your devotion to God dictates your every decision... Maybe that's to get your life on track and follow Jesus. Maybe that's to start giving financially to the work of God through the church or through missions. Maybe it's to start a business or share the gospel with a neighbor. When you begin to view your job and the things you do for fun, your hobbies, your personal lives as a means to glorify God, anytime you begin to do this, live your life in this way, the life of faith in Jesus, not only... Do you step into a battle? When faith gets into every part of your life, you move from the back of the line, from the back of the battle, to the front. When you put Jesus in the center of your life, you become a target for the enemy. Paul continues in Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 13, he says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Now, the word Paul uses there, resist, in the original language means to be hostile towards. That's not a passive word. That's not just sitting back and letting the battle take place. It's aggressive. It's action. It's fighting against. Now, see, being in a battle implies that we are fighting. We're not just standing by watching this thing happen. We are fighting against this battle. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, to fight the good fight of faith. Now, the good fight is not a fight you lose. A good fight is a fight you win. As a kid and as a teenager, I got myself into a handful of fights. Now, I was a pretty big kid, so I didn't lose a lot of fights. But I do remember losing some. But this battle of faith is not one of those fights we lose. The fight of faith... Faith is a fight we win. Jesus Christ won the battle on the cross. He conquered sin and death. And because He won, we win. But sometimes it can feel like we're not winning. In life, it can feel like we're not winning. Like the entire world is against us. And we wonder why. Well, let me tell you this morning that faith must be tested. It will be tested. Oswald Chambers says, Faith must be tested because it can be turned into a personal possession only through conflict. The test will either prove that your faith is right or it will kill it. 
So what happens when the thing that you had faith for doesn't happen? What happens when opposition comes against us? Maybe you're battling, suffering, pain, sickness, disease, an accident, trying to serve Jesus, and you just got fired. Maybe you started giving financially to the church, and your pay got cut. Maybe your marriage is falling apart. It could be doubt, could be fear, could be depression. Something prayed for for so long that you just can't even pray about it anymore. What is it that's come against you and your faith and is causing you to draw back right now? This is life. Stuff happens. Life happens. We face setbacks and opposition all the time. The Bible tells us, Peter writes in 1 Peter 4 verse 12, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. It's not strange to be going through battles and trials and difficult things. We all go through these things. So Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God so that we'll be able to resist these trials, these hard times. And he uses the picture of a Roman soldier putting on their armor and preparing for battle. Continuing in Ephesians 6, verses 14 through 17, Paul continues to write, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes. Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery darts of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now this morning I want to talk about one of those pieces of the armor. I want to talk about that shield of faith. It says to hold up the shield of faith to block those fiery darts, but sometimes there are cracks in the shield and an arrow penetrates. You know, there's kind of two schools of thought on that one. One is that we give the devil a foothold, and that is valid. King David, we find a story in 2 Samuel chapter 11, where in the springtime, the kings would go out to war. The king would lead the army to war. Well, David stayed back from the battle, and there was a crack in his shield. He ended up having an affair with another man's wife, and he ended up murdering a man. His heart wasn't right. He wasn't in the right place. There was a crack in his shield. But the other thought is, you know, we can be serving Jesus, doing our best to follow God, and somehow an arrow gets through. See, sometimes there is opposition, even when we are in the center of God's will. Oswald Chambers says, every time you venture out in the life of faith, you will find something in your everyday circumstances that flatly contradicts your faith. Now, we need to be careful not going around looking for a devil under every rock and bush, as they say. Not every bad thing that happens is an attack from the enemy. Sometimes things happen that aren't demonic And we need to be careful about this. C.S. Lewis writes, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. We need to find a balance in that. See, some oppositions are setbacks that are for a divine purpose, that are beyond our pleasure and comfort. And God is actually piecing together a puzzle, a puzzle that you are a part of, that you don't understand, and part of it involves the situation you're in. Often we cannot see God in this situation. We don't understand why He would allow us to go through hard times. But maybe the Lord is directing you and pruning you in a way that you can't see. He's preparing you for something greater. Joni Erickson Tata who was paralyzed from the neck down during a diving accident, says sometimes God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. So she believes that it was not God's will for her to be paralyzed and injured and ruin her uh, career in diving and stuff, but she knows that God uses that situation for a greater purpose and for his glory. 
And you need to understand that behind the scenes is a loving, real, and just God doing loving things even though you can't interpret them. And He's working out these things for our good and for our benefit and for our future. We wonder what God is doing to us. Instead, we need to realize what God is doing in us and for us. Either way, we need to know that God is not the author of our pain. God is not out there to hurt us and get us, but sometimes He allows these things for a greater purpose. He allows it, but He did not send it. See, God being our protection does not mean that we're never going to go through hard times. Nothing bad will ever come our way. Sometimes we're doing our very best to serve God and something penetrates our shield. We live in an imperfect world. We've got fallen DNA. There is just bad things in this world. It's a reality of life. Bad things happen to good people and we wonder why because the Bible tells us the, the battle has already been won but what we don't realize is God dwells outside of time and that battle is actually ongoing. The fight is still happening. So the Bible tells us that we need to hold up our shield of faith. Now in the book of Ephesians, Paul is writing to a large city in the Roman Empire where when, when Paul writes these things, his audience, they fully understand what he's talking about. They picture this Roman soldier and all their equipment. Now the Roman soldier, many of us, we picture the Roman soldier, the centurion with the hat and all that and their nice little round shield. Well, the Roman soldier actually had two different types of shields. One was that circular shield about that wide kind of thing that they would carry around during like parades. They were for show. They weren't used in the battle. The shield that they would use in a battle was huge. It was massive. It was two feet wide. It was five feet tall. It was extremely heavy. It was made of two large pieces of wood that were glued together and laminated. And uh, it wasn't used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was used when the army was advancing against a city when it was coming close to the walls and trying to overtake it. It was used where the battle was the fiercest. When the army was advancing against the city, they'd be coming up against these walls and archers, the, the people in the city where they're trying to overtake that are defending it, they'd have archers up on the wall and they'd be throwing down these fiery darts trying to obviously stop the army from coming against them. Well, the Roman shield was made in such a way that when a fiery dart would hit it, the dart would go into the shield and because it was so thick and dense and glued together, it would actually put out that flame. It's what it was designed to do. And the soldiers, they would actually come together as they would advance. It wasn't just one soldier going on his own. It was soldiers side by side locking their shields together and moving forward and advancing together. They'd become this impenetrable force. And if one dart managed to get through and a guy would go down, the shields would just close in over top of that guy to protect him. See, we weren't meant to stand alone. Only God can stand alone. He's the only one, the only being that is powerful enough, strong enough to stand completely on his own. The shield is not an isolated soldier standing on their own. It's only in the context of the army working together that the Roman shield did what it was supposed to do. See, we aren't meant to hold up our shield on our own. We're meant to hold up our shield together in the context of of a local church. Now obviously with COVID and all that going on, that looks a little bit different. We don't have massive gatherings. We're not coming together on Sundays and in large numbers to be together, but you know, you can still get together with your small groups. Make sure you've got close friends and family around you, people that know what's going on in your life, people that know if you're having a hard time, who can come around you and support you and pray with you and be with you. None of that changes because of COVID. That is still part of the community that God designed for us. See, we don't just hold up our shield for ourselves. We hold up our shield for those around us. Those on our left and those on our right. And it doesn't just protect us. It protects our wives and our husbands and our kids and our friends and our family. It protects all of those 
around us. When someone falls, we hold up our shield and we protect them. Now, suffering, pain, unanswered prayer and accident, persecution for serving Jesus, these things feel like fiery darts being hurled against us. And there are casualties, unfortunately, in this thing called warfare. And these things cause us to want to put down our shields and to pull back. But when our shield is connected to someone on our right and someone on our left, those people hold us up. When fiery darts come our way, we hold up our shields around those around us and we come together and we support one another and we move forward together. See, it's faith that quenches those fiery darts. We all have days where we feel like retreating, where we feel like giving up. Everybody goes through hard times. That's why we need people around us. See, fiery darts are intended to penetrate the soldier's armor. And the natural reaction for us when when fire comes upon us is to pull back, to retreat. It's a natural reaction to a trial. And when the enemy hurls fire, As Christians, though, we are not supposed to be those who draw back. We aren't like those who draw back to the destruction of our souls, but we press on to the saving of our souls, as the Scripture says. And our souls are saved when we begin to put our faith in Jesus, when we make Him the Lord of our life. And when a fiery dart comes our way, there is something stronger than that outside fire, and it's an inside fire, and it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, it's power, it's miracles, it's the Spirit of God living and dwelling inside of you. So let me ask you, what is your reaction when fiery darts come your way? What is your reaction when you see someone around you being attacked and under fire? The sad reality is, Too often, we get pushed away or we push others away. Somebody sins, makes a mistake, we write them off. King David, when he sinned and had an affair and killed a man, he didn't get written off. The Bible still describes him as a man after God's own heart. Or we draw back, we got hurt, we got let down, maybe by friends, by family, could be by the church. See, David represents earthly leadership. And earthly leadership can make mistakes, but there is a King of Kings and a Lord of Lords who will never retreat, who will never let you down. And when you're under attack, He becomes your shield. When Satan tries to attack you, Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith would not fail you. Jesus says, I am your sun and your shield. I am your direction and your protection. I am your exceeding great reward. See, our faith is in Jesus. And He is our example. He is our example of faith. In Hebrews 12, verse 2, it tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author of and perfecter of our faith. He is the one who initiates our faith. He is the one who sustains our faith. He is the one who perfects our faith. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. He leads the way. He shows us how to live this life. He came to earth. God in the flesh. He experienced every trial we could experience. He knows every hurt, every pain. He's experienced it all. He knows what it's like to go through hard times. He knows what it's like to have the entire world against you. And the writer of Hebrews compares this life we live to the life of a runner. Now, if you know me, you know I love to run. And you know, anytime I can put in a a running analogy or scripture talks about running, I'm going to use it. But this race is not a sprint. It's not a 100 meter, 10 seconds, and you're done. It's, it's like a marathon. It takes endurance. And like a marathon, life and marathons, 
There are hard times. There's times where it doesn't look good. In a marathon, there, a runner will often describe hitting the wall. They're coming up against just difficulty, hard. They want to give up. They want to throw in the towel. But a marathon runner, when they're hitting that wall, they don't give up. At least the good ones, they actually, instead of drawing back, slowing down, they actually speed up. They press against that wall. They break through that barrier and they smash it and they advance and they keep on going. That's kind of like what we need to do in life. When we come up against hard times, we don't draw back, but we need to keep pressing on and pushing past that. We must be a people with the kind of faith that says it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what I face. God is still God and He is still good and He is still in control. See, like the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power. It doesn't matter what you try to do, with, do to us. God is still good. And even if He doesn't, whether we live or die, whether He rescues us or not, He is God. Your circumstances can't change who God is. We need a faith that says, I don't know what my future holds, but I know the One who holds my future. We need a faith that says, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, there are miracles. With God, what seems impossible is possible. When it seems like there is no way, there is a way. He makes a way. We need a faith that gets back up. Paul was stoned in Derby and left for dead, but the believers in that town came around him and they began to pray for him. See, what they did was they lifted up their shields around Paul. They lifted up their faith and what happened was Paul got back up and he went right back into that city and he continued to preach the good news of who Jesus is. So a fiery dart's been hurled at you. So you're going through something hard. You've drawn back. You've fallen. You've slipped up. It doesn't matter. You can get back up. Romans 8.39 says, Nothing in all of creation can ever separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how hard your situation is. God is still with you and He still loves you. Maybe there's voices on the outside that have been speaking lies to you. Maybe uh, those voices have been getting in your mind. Well, you need to stop listening to those voices and start listening to the voice of God. Let the Word of God penetrate your heart and your mind and let what God says about you ring louder and truer than what anyone else says. Ask God to change your situation, but even if He doesn't, ask Him to change your perspective. See, perspective is not what we see, but it's how we see what we see. See, God wants you to know that He's working. He's not silent. He is driving the train. He's still in control and He has a plan and He has a purpose. Romans 8.28 promises us that God is working out all things for good for those who love Him. All things. Even those awful, horrible things. God is at work in those things and He's got good plans and good purposes for your future. And it could be that the more pain you're experiencing today, the, the greater purpose He has for you down the road. A bad past could mean a great future. Your pain could become a usable weapon to make you the person you should become. And so this morning, I want to ask you, what is your faith in? What is it that you are building your life upon. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells a story. At the end of the chapter, he tells a story of two men who went out to build a house. One of them found a really nice sandy beach. It looked beautiful. It was awesome. It's where they began to build their house. They built their house on the sand and they were living a life of luxury for themselves. The other man 
found a solid rock, bedrock to build his house upon, something that was un unmovable, unshakable, and he built his house there. And the story goes that a storm came, the winds came, the rains came, the waves came, it all came and was pounding against those houses. And the house that was on the rock did not move, but the house that was built upon sand came crashing down. And the story represents our lives. We can build our lives on the things that we want, the things that we desire, or we can build our lives upon Jesus. See, the Bible describes Jesus as the rock, the bedrock, the immovable rock, the one that doesn't change, the one that doesn't shift or cast any shadows, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the one that is completely trustworthy. And so are you building your life upon whatever you want or are you building your life upon Jesus? Because when those trials and storms come, if your life is on Jesus, it's not going to be shaken. Your faith might rattle in the wind a little bit, but when it all settles, when the dust settles, you're still standing firm because you've got a faith in a God that is good no matter what the situation. You have a faith that is an anchor and it's a sure and steadfast anchor for your soul. Maybe this morning or whenever you're listening to this, you are going through a storm. You are going through something incredibly hard and you need people to come around you, encourage you, reach out. If you're watching church online, hit that live prayer button. There's people that want to pray with you. Call the church number. We'll talk, we want to talk to you and pray with you. Get family and friends around you. Allow them to support you. Good Christian people who love God, who want to be there for you. Maybe this morning you have never placed your faith in Jesus. And this message, this story is just resonating in your spirit. And you're saying to yourself, I need to do this. I need to stop living my own way. And stop trying to face these battles on my own. I need Jesus. I need community of other believers around me. If that's you and that's resonating in your heart, I want to pray with you this morning, wherever you're at. Today, you can make the decision to follow Jesus. You just need to pray in your heart. We're going to do that right now. We're going to pray. And if you're saying that, I just encourage you to pray that with me. You might be by yourself. No one can hear you, but God hears you. And when you make that decision, He comes into your life and He begins to transform you and change you. So if that's you, let me just pray with you right now. Jesus, we thank You so much that You came from heaven to earth and You died on the cross for us. We thank You that You experienced all the, the hardships and the trials that we could ever face. You know what it's like to go through hard times and yet through it all, Jesus, You kept Your eyes fixed on the promise, the prize, the hope in Jesus. Today, this morning, we make a decision to follow you. Today is the day, God, I'm choosing to follow you and I put my hope and my trust in you. Jesus, would you come into my life and begin to transform my life? Today is a brand new day, Jesus. Jesus, I just, we, we, I pray that uh, you would become the Lord and Savior of my life today, Jesus. I, put, I surrender my life to you. I put my hope and trust in you, Jesus. And from this day forward, I choose to follow you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you are a good God who loves us so much. Amen. And if you're, you're going through something this morning, wherever you're at, I'm just going to pray for you that God would uh, surround you with good people and just by His Spirit come into your life right now and encourage you and pick you up. But uh, keep pressing on. Don't draw back. Press in. God is with you in this. Father, I thank You for every person watching this this morning. God, wherever they're at and whatever they're going through. Lord, I pray for those who are going through hard times, those who are going through storms. Father, we just lift them up to You right now, Jesus. And pray that you would uh, just come into their lives. God, we reach out to you this morning. And God, ask you to intervene in every situation. Thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you for your mercy that is new to us every day. And even if yesterday we made mistakes, today we can come to you and receive your grace 
And so, Father, I pray that your Spirit would just surround each one of us, God, whatever we're going through, whatever hardship and trial, God, and uh, just transform that situation. God, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to uh, see things as you see them, God. And if you're trying to teach us something or show us something, God, would you show those to us, Lord? We just pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Well, as we close and as we go into a time of worship, just want to encourage you to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Take these next moments to just uh, look to Him and surrender it all to Him. Whatever it is you're going through, he, he is for you. He is with you. He is a good God. He loves you. Amen. Let's worship. <laughs>